Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a basic uh, in spreadsheet Monte Carlo simulation of a um, investment portfolio. And um, here what I'm doing is um, assuming that I have starting with $100,000 and I'm going to invest it in S&P 500 where I think I can average 11.2% a year uh, with a standard deviation or volatility of 18% per year. Okay. I'm going to say that I have uh, 30 years till retirement and I'm going to invest an additional $10,000 per year and uh, I want to get an idea of okay what that will be worth uh, 30 years from now. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I've, I've already set some of this up, I'm going to um, generate a uh, random rate of return uh, for one year from today. Okay, and I'm going to do that using the norm inverse function. All right, so we're going to assume that the uh, rate of return follows a normal distribution. All right, I'm going to randomly get one using the random function. Okay, and then the average of that normal distribution is going to be 11.2% uh, with a volatility or standard deviation measurement of 18%. Okay. All right, so we can see that, okay, one possible return uh, is, is somewhere over 36%. Uh, if I generate another return, okay, we have 11.3%, okay, and, and so on for several different possible returns a year from now. All right, the ending balance, okay, there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm going to just take the beginning balance and I'm going to multiply that by 1 plus the annual rate of return. All right, and then I'm going to assume that I make my investment at the end of the year. Okay. All right, so we can see here that uh, this is a pretty good example, actually. I got lucky. Um, if I invest, if I have $100,000 and I earn 0.89%, uh, I'm going to earn 890 or $894 here, and then if I add 10000 to that, right, I end up with uh, 110894 okay? All right, so that's how I generate one possible ending value, all right? And then we have 30 years, so I'm going to copy this formula down. Okay, so there's a stream of possible uh, returns in, in 30 years' time, okay? And then the ending balance in the second year, uh, it's almost the same as uh, the first ending balance. So I am just going to actually copy this. Uh, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to absolute reference this. Okay, I'm going to copy it down and then, and then change the formula to update the, the beginning balance. Okay, so actually the beginning balance um, in year two is the ending balance in year one. Okay. All right, and then after you make that one adjustment, uh, we should be able to just copy this formula down for the 30 years. All right. And uh, let me let me put the uh, the final formulas up there. Okay, so that's how we generate a return and then here's how we figure out what the ending balance is okay and then we just need to sort of uh, collect what the uh, the ending balance is at, at the end of uh, year 30 all right so that's going to be an f uh, 39 all right and so i want to record that up here Okay, so uh, one possible outcome we have is uh, is ending with about three point five million dollars. Okay, uh, another one is ending with about four point four, and then there's one point two, uh, eighteen million, four point five, uh, three point five. All right, so that there uh, there seems to be a a big uh, a big range of ending values we could have. All right, and uh, which one do we choose? Well. 
we're not really sure which one to choose because we don't know what, what's going to happen in the future. Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is sort of try to characterize some of the things that could happen by generating uh, many, many possible ending values. All right, so uh, that's what I'm going to do down here. So I've set up a, a table, uh, and I'm going to generate a thousand possible ending values, and hopefully from that um, be able to get a, a, a reasonable idea of, of what my ending value uh, will be. All right, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is reference the ending value that we got from uh, F39 there. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to select my whole range so you can see that I ended a thousand. All right, and uh, then I'm going to use the, the data table tool. All right, and uh, I'm not going to use it uh, how it is conventionally used. All right, I'm going to sort of trick it into just. Um, pointing at a blank cell, so there is no input here, okay? And then what it will do in turn is just generate a thousand different uh, ending values, okay? All right, and so, uh, yeah, I'll format this as currency so we can see it a little better. I don't think we need the decimals. Okay, so, um, there we have a thousand possible uh, ending values, all right, for our our portfolio. Okay, all right, and so then I'm just going to summarize those possible ending values up here, getting uh, peeling off some statistics. All right, so I'll take the average. Obviously, we won't have uh, the average portfolio. All right, but here is a central tenancy number, all right, so we tend to have uh, $4.3 million uh, when I run this. If I run the simulation again, all right, so generate a new stream of random numbers, all right, I'm going to have things that are fairly consistent, fairly close to that 4.3 that we had initially, okay? We're going to see if this distribution has any skew to it, so I'm going to get the median, And it probably does have some skew since the lowest value it can have is zero and the highest value is out there. All right, so yes, we can see from this that uh, the 50th percentile is about 3.2 million. And again, if I run this simulation a number of times, I should get values that are right around there. Okay, and uh, where the, the mean is much higher than the median, uh, we can see that this distribution is very positively skewed, okay? All right, so still haven't really centered in on, okay, well, what will we have uh, at the end? We don't know. We don't know how much we're going to have at the end, but we can make probability statements about uh, what we'll have at the end. Um, probably the best way to do that is with percentiles, okay? Or um, I'm going to get, whoops. I need the percentile here. All right, uh, several different percentile functions, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to use this one, the percentile inclusive. Uh, and, and what that does is it includes the the zero and hundredth percentiles, or the the end posts. All right, if you use the exclusive one, uh, it excludes those. All right, so I, I think the inclusive is a, is a little more correct for what we're doing here. All right, so I, I'm going to get the fifth percentile. Okay. And uh, based on this, the probability statement we can make is that there is a 95% chance uh, that we will have uh, somewhere more than $964,000 at the end of 30 years. If uh, returns continue as they sort of historically have. Okay, so this 11.2 and the 18% standard deviation. Okay, so um, we can repeat this process with the uh, 25th percentile or any percentile you're interested in. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm going to use this again. 
same array here. Okay, and so from this we can say, yes, we have a 25% a, a chance of having somewhere less than 1.7 million or 1. Point almost 8 million, all right, and a 75% chance of having uh, something more than 1.7 million, okay? All right, and then we can just sort of see just how volatile, how spread out the possible ending values are using the uh, standard deviation function. All right, and I'm going to use this dot s version, all right, which tells me uh, I have a sample. All right, uh, but once I have a thousand iteration, it doesn't really matter too much um, that we make the correction for uh, for um, for sample versus population, but we'll do it just to make sure we're absolutely correct. Um, and then you can see just how volatile this this kind of uh, investing is, all right? And this actually is um, not too far off from what you can expect or what has happened in the past, uh, investing S&P 500. Okay, then, um, that's a simple Monte Carlo uh, simulation using just just the uh, no add-ins and, um, and just what we have in Excel.